What we hope to achieve from this conversation is to um, look at the causes of rape, um, blaming. So, um, joining me um, on this conversation is Dominic E. Obozoa. Yeah, um, he's a legal practitioner, social entrepreneur, and director at Fondacion Exito. Thank you for joining us, Dominic. Thank you very much, member. Great stuff. Okay, so we'll just dive right at it. A lot has been happening lately. Um, we're dealing with the pandemic. We're dealing with COVID-19, the lockdown, the ease of the lockdown, and everything has just been on the rise. We're looking at domestic violence um, increasing. Now we're dealing with sexual violence. Over a um, couple of days in the news, we've just been seeing different things popping up. And it makes me wonder if women are actually safe out there. We know that men are affected, but when you look at the women, where do they run to? What do they do? So we're looking at cases like rape. We're looking at um, gender-based violence. But I do not think that a lot of people have knowledge or enough ideas on what this is, on what rape is or gender-based violence is. So I think the first step is to educate people on what these definitions are. So Dominic, if you could please help us out. Um, all right, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's important to go from the general to the specific mm -hmm. um, so that at least we can break this down from the top, you know. So gender-based violence basically, first of all, can affect anyone. Okay. Whether you're male, whether you're female. Um, however, in recent times, it's been on the increase, particularly against women, which is why, of course, we're focusing on women at this time. Okay. Now, okay. violence against women is rooted in centuries of, I mean, male domination over time. And um, this contributes you know, to to the pandemic of rape, I'd like to use that. Now, according to the UN Declaration on the Elimination of Violence Against Women, this was, uh, this was in 1993. Now, violence against women can take several forms. Now, these forms include intimate partner violence. Of course, an intimate partner is maybe a boyfriend, um, a husband, mm -hmm. you know. Um, a lover and all of that. Um, then there is sexual violence and harassment. All right. Then there is human trafficking. Okay. And now human trafficking includes slavery and sexual exploitation. Then there is female genital mutilation and then there's child marriage. So these are all forms of, you know, gender-based violence. However, of particular importance was here is sexual violence and harassment. Now, sexual violence and harassment includes rape, forced marriage, sexual acts, unwanted sexual acts, um, sexual harassment, maybe in the workplace, in the business, uh, child molestation, child abuse, street harassment, stalking, cyber harassment. So these are all forms of, you know, sexual, uh, all forms of sexual violence and harassment. However, our focus today is rape. So we find that rape is only a component of gender-based violence. It's just one of that component. So what is rape? So uh, we've had, we, 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 we have, um, we have several laws a couple of laws in nigeria we have our criminal code we have the penal code we have the violence against uh, persons prohibition act and then we have the child rights act so rape is defined in our penal codes and our criminal laws as when a man mm -hmm. penetrates a woman against her will and without consent but this is restrictive because it, restrict, it restricts it to a man and a woman, a man penetrating a woman. This is restrictive. So which yeah. is why I would, you know, I would tilt more towards the Violence Against Persons Act, 
you know, which defines rape more elaborately. So please permit me to read that so that I don't misquote it. Now, it says that um, when a person, which means man or woman, when a person, all right, the Violence Against uh, Persons Prohibition Act, which means when a person intentionally penetrates the vagina, anus, or mouth, of another person with any other part of his or her body or anything else without consent or with incorrectly obtained consent. Mm. Where it is, of course, incorrectly obtained consent is where maybe you you treat the person that you are their husband or you force or harass the person yeah. or you put the person in such a state of threats where it is they cannot say no and for their life or because they need to get out from there they consent you know yeah. so you find that the violence against persons provision act is even more elaborate and it breaks it even down so that means anybody can be subject to it yeah. whether male or female however the pandemic has been against women in recent times you know yeah we move on to another law which is also clear the child rights act which was passed in 2003 provides that sex with a child is rape basically mm -hmm. so that's because of course a child is is incapable of giving consent in any case yeah. so there's no way you can you know you can get that uh consent from a child you know so what this then means is that anyone, you know, can be raped. But in addition to that, anyone who then finds themselves in any of these situations must do everything in their power to remove themselves from that situation so that they are not because because it's 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 rape is so and debilitating that you cannot you cannot allow yourself be in that kind of environment where um you can be raped you know so you must do everything possible to take yourself out of such circumstances if i can come in um considering you mentioned the child law yes right yes so if a child cannot give consent uh, in a society whereby lately most of the cases we see we see that children are being raped and now the child cannot take herself out of that environment and in in a society where um where cases of rape is being brought forth then people blame the victim so who are we now to blame or what are the causes of this rape who is blamed for this uh, act that is being carried out on both children both adults because sometimes they'll say oh did you dress properly were you wearing short skirts so in a situation like this, what are the causes of rape? All right, thank you very much. That's that's a very it's a very pertinent very pertinent question. That is because uh, of recent time there was even a father who said that his daughter allowed him and asked him. I mean, it was it was terrible. It was it was ridiculous as it was terrible. Okay. I bled, you know, because you are meant to protect that child. Even if the child was ignorant. So, now I said that to say that there, there, there have been several notions, several reasons that people give as causes of rape. Exactly. They've, so, they, 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 they've attributed this to several purposes. Like you mentioned, what people were. The child allowed me. Some say, oh, it's for ritualistic purposes. Okay. Some say, oh, it was drug abuse. Some say I was drugged. I was mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was doing. Um 
first, it must be clear and emphasized critically that there is no justification whatsoever. There is no justification whatsoever for rape. For rape. None at all. Secondly, there is no good enough reason to cause rape. None at all. Okay. Now, anybody who rapes another person is naturally criminally minded. Because every sexual act in the first place, I mean, it begins in the mind. In criminal law, you have the yeah. mens rea and then you have the actus reus. So which means before you engage in any act, you have first of all thought about it. However, all of the mind okay. issues are issues in the realm of you know neuroscience. I'd leave that. But it's important to consider the results of studies that have been carried out in this area. You know. Now, a study and reports by the NDLEA, National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, showed that the majority of the perpetrators of rape were under the influence of drugs and alcohol. And um, so technically, that person would assume, would say that, oh, they were under the influence of drugs and alcohol. Now, another study carried out by the Lagos State Domestic and Sexual Violence Response Team showed that most perpetrators of rape were influenced by pornography. One, drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, others claimed that they didn't know the gravity of the offense. So these, these are findings, you know, based on research, all right? Now, this also goes to prove that people really don't get raped because of what they are wearing. They get raped because the perpetrator is a nuisance. Yeah. Yeah. So that argument of what was she wearing, so I would ask you, what was the three-month-old baby wearing that she was raped by her father? My point when the mother was exactly because when that, the mother was in the hospital yeah I, but, that was just what i was about to point out and we we hear um, excuses like oh it was the devil and if a father cannot protect his own then who do we expect if a father mm -hmm. can go ahead to rape his child then who else can protect his child do you understand me because if the father that is in a position to safe cannot protect his child then the neighbor the next door neighbor can can do the same because fathers are not representing um the roles that they are supposed to to represent and when a society whereby even in the industry or the entertainment industry or you, or you come out on social media and you say oh i was raped though so instead of people to actually think back or sit back and think about it then they say oh this one is looking for attention yeah. or lying or she looks slutty, so she was definitely looking for it. That's the world that we live in. So, um, just to buttress further, all right, the point to be made here is that all of these reasons that are due are only mm. symptoms, they're only symptoms of a deeper problem. Really, they are not the problem, they're only symptoms of a deeper problem. And what that tells us is we need to do so much more as a society, as a people, as a country, as a law enforcement agent to curb the menace of rape. So that if you look at, because technically rape is a criminal offense. So I would say, let's look at the, 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 the parties in a typical, in a typical, um, criminal court case, for instance, so that we're able to identify the responsible parties in perpetrating this heinous crime. Yeah. Now, first of all, 
there is the victim who is in quotes, all right, as a yes. defendant. Then there is the defendant who is the perpetrator. Now there is the prosecutor, the security operatives. There's the judge, the medical experts who give expert evidence. There's the courtroom. Mm. There are those who are in attendance. Now, there are religious leaders and institutions. There are traditional leaders, there are governmental institutions, there are academic institutions, business owners, the private sector leaders, the media and entertainment sector, yeah. and the general the generality of citizens themselves. Every one of these persons named are contributory factors. Why do I say that? They play a very crucial and fundamental role to the systemic cause, endorsement of and promotion of rape as a culture, so that when the victim does not report, make a report, they contribute. Yeah. When the religious leader says, oh, it's, it is a church issue, let's not overflow it, let's not put it out there, let's deal with it privately, they contribute. When the family members say, um, let's, let's, it's a family matter, they contribute. When security operatives say, look, it's a family letter, but go and settle it at home, they contribute. When the judge does not hand down the maximum sentence, the judge contributes. When the citizen on the road says, what were you wearing? They contribute. Exactly. When the mother blames the daughter, says, ah, go away, it's a lie. How can you accuse daddy? How can you accuse your uncle? They contribute mm -hmm. in perpetrating the culture of rape. So, uh, it's therefore important to understand that everybody must come together to take responsibility. Mm. And responsibility simply means that we take our personal all right, personal abilities in life yeah. and ensure that we do the right thing. We respond okay. to our ability to do the right thing. And irresponsibility is just the opposite. So in looking at all of this, the causes are two things, irresponsibility and impunity. Irresponsibility okay. because people refuse to do the right thing. Years ago, there was a rape case I was going to handle and I said to the mother of the daughter who was four, I think she was four years old at the time. I said, you know what, let's take these people to the cleaners because the daughter was raped in a school. And the proprietress of the school erased the CCTV footage, which could have shown the perpetrator. Imagine. And I said to the mother, let us take, we will shut down this school because school is a danger to other children. But the father came and said, you know, he's a pastor and all of that. Um, he doesn't like fighting. He would like to leave it in the hands of God. This school is still operating. Of course, they moved out of the, of course, they moved out of the area, you know, and then they've got, but the point is this. We must take responsibility. That is, and then secondly, this this continues because of impunity. Impunity simply means someone does something because it believes there are no consequences. Nobody will do anything to me. And if they have enough money, they can buy the authorities. So that's 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 basically talking about talking about responsibility and impunity. It's um it takes us back to the recent case of the band, right? So we're on social media and from one rape case to the other and um this lady comes out and she says oh back in 2018 the band raped me the society being the society that we are because we we, we always try to take sides with the people that have the higher funds or the people that we like a lot of people came out to bash her and they said you're lying why are you just coming out now why didn't you talk since since 2018 why is it now and here is a case whereby the law is supposed to be on the side of the people 
And a case is being taken to, and the band writes a, um, takes her to send a letter and um, says she's supposed to pay a particular sum. And in a few days, she's being picked up and held against her will by the police people. These are the people that are supposed to defend us. These are the people that are supposed to um, speak on our behalf. So in a situation whereby the, the law is against us, what will now make us feel like, okay, it's, it's, we are safe enough to come out? What will make us feel like, okay, if I, even if I, I just say it, there's somebody willing to fight my cause for me. But there is nothing like that. It's like the society is working against you. The law is not on your side. Anybody can just do what they want to do and get away with it. Anybody can do what they want to do and get away with it. And we're still looking at the case. They will drag it here, drag it there. But at the end of the day, when nothing is being done, it, it goes away just like that. Because now the laws, what laws um, are we looking at? What are the what are the um, punishments for rape? Is it that I'm going to pay a fine and just come out after a few days? Or is it that or is it that it, you're just going to be there for life? Because I feel if people know the consequences of their action, if they know the punishments that they are going to face, it would help curb this um, pandemic that we're dealing with. Because not just babies are affected, not just Muslims are affected, the ones that would cover their heads from their head to their feet. So it's not a thing of how were you dressed. The law is not on our side. Amendments are supposed to be made, but it is just open. So anybody can do what they want and get away with it. So how does the law help us to fight these battles that we're dealing with? Okay, um, let me let me quickly say let me quickly say first of all, uh, in dealing with the Debanj case, and uh, first off, no time. A criminal act does not have an expiration date. It doesn't have a time lapse. So whether she came out now, whether she came out two years ago. Whether she came out three years ago, same thing, right? However, yes, it's advisable to, to make a report early, you know. But you find that because of the culture of shaming victims, the culture of impunity and all of that, uh, victims typically don't want to come out, you know. And uh, it's, important that it's, it's, it's important that you mention Why? Because... The media and entertainment sector, the media and entertainment sector is a big player in the scheme of things mm -hmm. here. First off, let's establish, right? Nobody should be blamed. Nobody should be victim shamed. It is so imperative that you cannot gamble it, you cannot joke about it, you cannot make, uh, you cannot in any way deride anybody who has been raped. Rape is such a violent crime that it dehumanizes the victims, it devalues their self esteem, it damages their future. And you find that all the time, upwards of more, about 95% plus, of music videos, certain movies, they objectify the woman, they promote sexuality, they just put woman out there as an object. Yeah. And you find that a lot of these people think it is a game. Why? Because there's affluence, there's influence, and then they think that they can do whatever they like. So it promotes impunity with certain influence. The laws are there, but the victim must be protected against all odds. And the monster of rape must be burned to ashes, and that ash washed away in the sea. Now, if you look at the fundamental rights in our constitution, it provides for the dignity of the human person, right? Mm -hmm. uh, under the fundamental objectives of government, it says, look, the security and welfare of 
the citizens is the primary objective of government. Now, I like that background to say that the problems we have are problems of implementation. The Violence Against Persons Provision Act, for instance, protects. But you find that when you go to the police station, you have a problem with the officer. Which is why, as much as possible, we say use every means possible to protect yourself. There are civil society organizations, for instance, in Lagos State, there's the Mirabel Center, where you can make a complaint. Um, like the lady in the debunch case did, get a lawyer, call a lawyer, go out there, put your information out there, but whatever you do, ensure that you get justice. However, it's important to also note that as a people, we must understand that no human being is safe until all humans are safe. Yeah. And all humans are not safe until the woman is safe. If the woman is not safe, we can there's no excuse, whether drug or alcohol, there is no excuse good enough. So instead of trying to create blame scenarios, instead of trying to victimize, shame victims, all stakeholders will do more to support victims. Now, the vice president said something, and I'd like to quote him here. He said, this code of rape, sexual gender-based violence, is a blemish on us as a people and as a society, collectively, and it dehumanizes our humanity and dignity as Nigerians. Yeah. That means survivors, victims, cannot be blamed or shamed. All they need is support. That means they cannot become targets of intimidation at all by security agencies. Otherwise, justice for rape victims would continually elude us. Now, the media and entertainment industry is one of the pillars of society. There are other pillars, you know, governance, business, religion, family, education, and sports. But the media must take a frontal role. Why? Because media is such a huge form of information that it, it, it can literally sweep a culture of its own, which is why you find that there are a lot of media personalities who shouldn't ideally, on a normal day, be in our space, in our airwaves, but they are making waves everywhere, and they are causing chaos. And we're told about some, some human being who came into Abuja, defied the lockdown, fraudulently boarded private jets, and came into Abuja to organize a concert. And he has followers, people who proudly call themselves his followers. So the entertainment industry, they must lead the vanguard. They must lead the vanguard. Arts, culture, entertainment, there must be a multi-sectoral approach by these several pillars more in protecting survivors of rape. We must take that seriously. Now, um, yeah. I would add, all right, I would add, that the entertainment and media industry must also stop, stop the sexualization of women. These days you find professionals, they say the video, thing, any video you see, you must see a naked person, you must, you go on YouTube, you see all manner of nonsense. The media and entertainment industry must take the lead and stop the victimization, abuse, the sexualization, and objectification of women. They must stop. And we must stop them. Brands must stop them. 
Who do you choose as your brand ambassadors? Or what yardsticks do you use? Hmm. TV stations must them. What kind of musical shows do you put on your TV? Radio stations must stop them. What kind of music, what kind of songs do you air on your radio waves? It is a collective approach. It is not just something that one person, one government agency, or anybody else can do. We must come together as a collective. It is painful because you find that everything people see on in the media space, on the TV, on the internet, they typically want to go and practice because the mind is such a powerful tool. So we must take this frontal. It is critical. It is very critical. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, at this point, I just want to welcome everybody that is joining us. Um, I noticed that new sets of people just joined in. So during the course of this conversation, if you have questions, you can just drop your questions down at the drop box. And at the end of this um, discussion, Dominic will take your question and um, shed more light on where um, you're having difficulties. And if you also have um, additional um, additions to make, you can as well drop them down there in the drop box. I know a lot of people um, have things to say because rape is a subject that everybody has an experience with. Even if you've not been raped, you know somebody that has been raped or you've heard somebody about somebody that has been raped. And the media, um, social media especially, it, it, it helps in a way. It's an avenue where people come out and where as much as people drag you and people say, oh, you're lying or, oh, you, you deserve it. There are still some people that would still want to push and, okay, even if this person is lying, let us know why. And that's why when cases like um, uh, UAS case came up, people really went out, um, created the hashtags, and they spoke about it, and it became big, and the likes of Jennifer, and so many. The cases are endless, like I said. There are a lot. So it's not a thing of where were you. It's not a thing of what were you wearing. It's not. It's, it's just crazy, because I cannot bring myself to understand it. If a father can rape his children, if a father can rape his um child whilst his wife is giving birth then i'm baffled because I, I can't say any other thing because it's totally crazy so in a in a case of rape in a situation whereby somebody some somebody gets raped what what is the first line of action you you would advise what what should be the first thing to do? should they run to the tell somebody should they go to the hospital what exactly should they do Okay. Um, first off, I would I would say that um, I would address both the victims and then um, other people around the victims. Uh, first of all, you must ensure that you're safe. All right. So the event has already happened. So the immediate next step is you must ensure your own personal safety. Um, which which means first off, you need to reach out quickly to someone you know you can confide in to say, look, something just happened to me and I need to speak with someone. I don't think I am safe here. Or I need to be in a safe place. You need to first of all ensure that you remove yourself from the place if you can at that time or whenever next it becomes possible for you to be able to remove yourself from that space. Now, part of safety is also understanding that you're not to blame. You must never, there is no survivor, no victim, nobody who has been subject to, has been raped, should ever blame themselves for being raped. It's part of ensuring your safety. The moment you've done that, the next thing is to make sure you do not wash up, do not clean up. Don't go take your bath. Don't try to say, oh, I feel dirty, I feel dirty, I need to, I need to clean up. I feel, don't do that because that is your evidence. 
whether you decide to whether you decide to file a complaint now or later or in another two years your evidence is your body that is original evidence that's what we call original evidence in law whether it is semen whether it is um, blood whatever it is is your evidence so the next thing you need to do is get medical attention now generally the law would say get tested in a in a, in a government hospital as legal practitioners, we will say also get tested in a private hospital. You have multiple test results to show what exactly has happened to you. So that the tests would also give you um, what, what it will deal with the fact that if there are health issues, if there are bruises, if there are injuries, if there are infections, whatever it is. And then it would also not make provision for medication to deal with any health challenges that may come up as a consequence of that rape. Get uh, help from a counseling center. In Lagos, for instance, there is the Mirabel Center, is the first sexual assault and referral center. I think they have a couple of offices across the country. If you can, okay. put a call across and say, look, something just happens to me. I need help. So first step is get someone you can trust, speak with someone. Two, do not wash up, do not clean up, resist the temptation to clean up. Three, get tested, get a medical report. Four, call a sexual assault referral center if you can. Otherwise, quickly make a criminal report. Every perpetrator of rape must be held accountable for their actions. You cannot say the person is my uncle or he begged me or yeah. you, because the truth of the matter is criminals will always be criminals. They will do it to the next person. So make sure you follow that procedure as much as possible. And then to uh, and then lastly, while all of that yeah. has gone on, get counseling. Get counseling to help you deal with the process and experience, and then eventually get healing so that you can now reconnect with yourself. And then you can begin to recover from that trauma and then begin to aim at your transcendent life. Now that is for the victim. Survival. Okay. Rather, for others, the first thing you must do when a victim comes to you is believe them. The second thing you do is believe them. The third thing you do is believe them. It is not in your place to judge or blame. You are not the law. Until the law says this person falsely accused somebody else, your duty is to believe them and provide them help to get justice and counseling. That includes friends, families, relatives, associates. So there should be a general ownership, a general ownership of the fight against rape. Otherwise, this would continue to be perpetrated. Okay. But is there is there um, a punishment for... Like, I think that one of the reasons why people do not come out to speak their truth is because they know that people will not believe me. So what's the need? Or people will shame me. Because of the stigma, they don't want to come out to speak their truth, right? So is there any punishment for um, people that shame victims or survivors or blame there should be some... Something like that. That way, people would check and find what they say to these victims. Well, presently, uh, presently, there is no, there is no law that you know that that punishes um, victim uh, shamers and blamers. You know, um, 
we basically have, because like I mentioned earlier, Constitution says, look, every human being is entitled to the dignity of human person. We basically have a moral responsibility. All right. There are laws in the country that punish rape, life imprisonment. However, implementation is a challenge. Now, there are major laws. That's true. The Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act, the Child Rights Act, challenges. Since 2015, for instance, five years after the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act was passed into law, only 14 states out of 36 have domesticated it. So my question is, why? Are these state governors not in support of protecting victims? Or are they saying that they support rape? I think it's the fundamental, fundamental question they need to answer. Because the yeah. VAP Act is clear and covers the whole field of victims' rape. The Child Rights Act, which basically says that sex with the child is rape. All right? Now, rape is punishable with life yeah. imprisonment. Out of 25 states, out of 36 states, only 25 states have domesticated it. Most of the northern states have not domesticated it. Why? Are these governors saying they are not in support of protecting the girl child victim? So you find that as much as we can do so much on our own. The government has a huge role to play. play. Domestication and implementation of these two laws are a major necessity. And the lack of this is a reason why there's a prevalence of rape. Secondly, our agencies, they are ill recruited. They are basically a job for the boys. Give my brother, you know, give my brother work. Whoa. So you find rape, rapists becoming police officers. When you take a case to them, exactly. they're going to look at exactly. them and say, what are you wearing? There you go. You find okay. that they are, they are poorly trained. They are terribly mm -hmm. remunerated. So it puts this at the foot of the government again. And they are largely, so you find that in all of them, they are largely ill-equipped. Why should, because the last, one of the cases I, I, I heard of, a father has been raping the daughter. The daughter called, the DPO gave the daughter the telephone number. If it happens again, call me. The daughter called and the DPO said it's a family issue. There's nothing they can do. That she should call her family members in the village. How terrible, how ignoble of our security apparatus as a country. In Nigerian police force. So you find that no matter what we say here, there is a lot that is dumped on the foot of the government. Now, the judicial process needs to be enhanced. The snail speed of our judicial system makes it terrible for families to continue. So you find that over a period of time, they settle out of courts. Over a period of time, they get tired because for the prosecutor to go to court you have to mobilize him you have to pay his transport fare for him to come from no you know what it's just a whole lot of nonsense going on added to that there needs to be stiffer penalties psychiatric evaluation for perpetrators of rape now Consequence management solves problems. The brain is only corrected by consequences. And the right kind of consequences. For instance, if a child puts his hand in the fire and he gets burnt, what happens? He knows that you can't touch that fire anymore. When he sees a spark, he yeah. runs away. When he sees a spark, he begins to scream. Why? Because he has been burnt. 
until we have the right kind of consequences, the right implementation of those consequences, the business will continue. For those who say it was the devil that pushed them, there was the serial rapist. He said it was the devil. He doesn't know why. And I said to that kind of person, why not go to Mambila Barracks? Go to the military checkpoint at Mambila Barracks, slap the military man at the checkpoint and tell him it was the devil that pushed him. Or take your vehicle, go to the Astro Rock Villa gates, ram into it, and then come out with a gun and tell them that you want to kill the president and it's the devil that is pushing you. So you find that because of our irresponsibility as people, we come up with all manner of excuses to justify heinous offenses, heinous crimes, and until the government decides to become responsible enough to put in place measures, it will continue. Now, life imprisonment is also not good enough. Why? The corporates may get pardoned in the future, and then they come out, and then they do worse things. Let's even assume that they don't do worse things. Rape damages the life. It's life defacing in itself. There are traumatic, post-traumatic life challenges that rape victims continue to deal with for the rest of their lives. Such that it is only the death, death sentence that can curb that menace. And if you look at that, you find that in different countries, the death sentence is what they met out. Uh, if you look at India, for instance, there's life imprisonment to death. France is 15 to 30 years. China is a death sentence for castration. Uh, Saudi Arabia, you are beheaded within days. China, you are beheaded. Uh, you are behe uh, Saudi Arabia, you are beheaded within days. North Korea, death by firing squad. Afghanistan, you are shot in the head or you are hanged to die. Uh, Egypt is death by hanging. Uh, and so on and so forth. So you find that the answer is that, look, our government needs to do more. I just want to say that nobody is too big to be raped. Because when you look at it, you'll be like, hmm, she's too educated to be raped. Or she has money now, so she can't be raped. So it's possible she's just doing this to gain attention. Um, I want to drag us back to um, Bukola Dakolo's case. Bukola Dakolo is, she's comfortable, she's educated. And I don't think there is any reason why someone would just come out and say, I was raped when, in actual fact, they were not raped. Because they said ninety-eight percent of the cases that are being reported are confirmed true. So, in a situation whereby someone comes out to say, "Oh, I was raped," too, in as much as the person they are accusing might be somebody that, in your eyes or in our eyes, are too good to be true. If they say a pastor raped somebody, that's when most people now say, "No, he's a man of God. He can't do that." Oh no, why did she come out early? Why is it now? Her story doesn't add up. Things like that. So I just want to emphasize that anybody can be raped at all. Be big, be you small, educated, uneducated, wealthy, poor, it doesn't matter. There is some form of wickedness in the heart of everybody, gender neutral. I just think that we all should. Um, take responsibility for ourselves and for the people around us. Um, totally, so, totally agree. So uh, looking, moving forward, right, during this period of lockdown and this period of pandemic, the it's not like the rape cases, they've not been there. Oh. They've been there. But is it that? Is there something about being locked down that just released these spirits? Or, because it just blew up overnight and when you open your media, it's from one rape case to another. And it, just, it makes me wonder, where is this coming from? Okay, uh, quickly, I would start from the, I will start from the hideous, all right? Um, mm -hmm. A colleague, a colleague posted something on her status, and I couldn't help but, but laugh when I, when I saw it. And um, it, it was terrible. The colleague, she said, 
She said that she thinks that government should legalize prostitution. And her reason for that was because she said people went on lockdown, including the ladies of the night, and then there was an explosion of rape. That they have a role to play in the system. Of course, you know everything with social media. She said it and said, oh, she's just in her own, and then she and she laughed about it. Of course, people commented and, you know, rape and gender-based violence has always been there. Quick statistic, one in three women, globally, 35% of women raped. One in two women killed. That's 50% globally. 71% of women trafficked. 3% three, three of four of those trafficked victims Sorry, 71% of trafficked victims, right, are women. Three of four of those victims is 75% sexually assaulted, right? Now, this tells you that it, is, it has been pervasive, it's not today. The only difference was that the irresponsibility of the citizens became known. The irresponsibility of the perpetrators of sexual and gender-based violence became known. So they've always been there, but they were under the cover of pseudo-sanity. So you see the person and you think the person is sane, but the person is not sane. And then the victims were, the victims were now trapped with their rapists in the same house. Yeah. So that where you find that maybe a father who has a depraved mindset, for instance, and would normally, technically, maybe go out to assuage himself somewhere else, could no longer do that. And because of his depraved mindset, he decides to take it out on his daughter. You find men who abused their wives, strangers who abused other people, so this was basically, it wasn't because of the pandemic. It was just the irresponsibility of the people, the irresponsibility of the perpetrators. Like we already established that, look, it is not alcohol or anything, it's irresponsibility and impunity. If they were not caught, would they own up and say it was, it was the devil or it was something else? No. So the reason we are aware is because they were caught. So the pandemic has nothing to do with just basic irresponsibility. Yes, there is a connection, and the only connection is that the indiscipline and irresponsibility of perpetrators. And then, more importantly, the dysfunctionality in our families and society came to the fore. Because if the family is not dysfunctional, why would a father rape his daughter? And why would a mother who knows that a father is raping a child keep quiet about it? Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's it. Just before we wrap up, one last question. Yes, please. So how, how would you advise or what would you say um, we can do to curb, curb, I don't know if we can stop this, but to curb the rape culture in our society? First off, we've talked about responsibility. So responsibility is such a big deal. It's such a huge deal. All mm -hmm. of the different actors, like we've outlined, all right? The victim, the victims, yeah. survivors, you must become more sensitive. Years ago, I wrote several articles, I think about five, five series, talking about the vector senses. You must become sensitive. You cannot trust anybody. Someone said yesterday on the radio show, ah, uh, someone in my neighbor's house almost raped my daughter. And I asked him, what did your daughter go and do alone in a neighbor's house? Why would you send your daughter alone to a neighbor's house? Over time, I have always said I would never, male or female, my children would never visit without my presence, no matter who the relative is. 
because over time it's been established that perpetrators are people who are known to the victims. So that is why the case can Very continue true. unabated for years. Two, generally we must become responsible. Three, government must put in place measures, implementation measures. Courts, judges, there must be special courts, special courts, so that cases of rape can be expeditiously dealt with. You know that you are facing the, you are dying immediately. There's no long term, there's no time to begin to bribe your lawyer or prolong the process. Families must become responsible. Mm -hmm. Now, the society is a function of our families. Our families are a function of our relationship. What kind of relationships are we building? How are we getting married? Are you just waking up and seeing any guy and you marry or you see any girl and you marry and they have no reasoning as to how to raise a family or how to protect children? We must all put on our vector senses. We must be careful. And we must become more responsible as a society. Government must wake up. Citizens must wake up. And lastly, November twenty fifth. November twenty fifth. Uh, every year is the UN is the UN Day uh, for the elimination of violence against women. As we work towards the twenty twenty celebration, importantly, we should all own the fight. I think. If we can adopt it, we can use the hashtag I am she. Everybody, father, mother, government, everybody, we are all key players. Let's use the hashtag I am she because you're born and raised by a woman. You're married to a woman or married by a woman. You're a brother to a woman. You're loved by a woman or you are a lover of a woman promoted by generations of women and for men you're supported by a woman to succeed so why would we why would we want to do that the woman is such a powerhouse for the building of nations generations and families we must come together and protect the woman and the girl child thank you Thank you so much, Dominic. This has been really, really helpful. It's been very insightful. I know that a lot of us right here on this call, we've learned a thing or two. So if we have any comments, any additions, any questions, you can um, either speak up or just drop it right there in the comment box. If you have any questions, we're done with the questions. But if there is any addition whatsoever, we're open to hearing from you. Okay, someone said, um, Eugene said, very, the government has a role to play. Policy making is very crucial in the fight against rape. In Ghana, for instance, rape victims have to pay about 300 to 500 CDs to have a medical checkup to prove if they have been raped or not. I recently signed an online petition meant to change this law. Mr. Dominic, do you think international organizations have a role to play in pressuring governments to change such laws i would say yes fundamentally fundamentally uh in nigeria for instance the not too young to run bill was pushed by organizations the vap act was pushed by organizations i i am proud to say i was one of the numerous people who who uh, who reviewed the vap act you know and i remember when when I was going through that review, there were certain provisions that were too menial. I can't even say minor. They were beneath minor. And I flagged all of them. I said, I don't understand. Are we serious or not? You know. But these were driven by private organizations. Yes, they have a role to play. They must come out as a collective. A single organizations cannot make so much impact. I always push for a collective. I always push people to aggregate, come together, and put pressure on government. Why would you ask the person who is a victim to pay so much? Ideally, such tests should be free. However, 
Mm -hmm. If it's now found that the person falsely accused someone else, and really that person should also face the same consequences of rape. Because what would have happened to the okay. person if they were convicted would have probably been death or you know any other cons any other penalty that was put there. So if you falsely accuse someone, you should also face the same consequence. What that then does is it stops false accusation, and false labeling. But private organizations, international organizations, certainly they have a role to play. Otherwise, our governments will continue to make make a joke of issues like this. Eugene said great submission. Thank you. Yeah, You're thank welcome, you. Eugene. Thank you. So yeah, we're open to questions. But um, if you do have questions and maybe you want to reach out to Dominic much later, um, Dominic, I don't know if you would mind um, leaving your email in All the right, box. Can I just type it in there or what? Yes, you can just type it in. They would have, they would see it. So just if you have further questions you can reach out Dominic. If this session has been helpful to you, kindly drop um, a message on the comment session. This is currently running live on Facebook and it will be there if you want to go back. We're currently making a recording of it as well. So if you need a recording, you can send to you. Thank you all so much for your time. This has been an amazing session. I definitely had fun talking about this because this is something that it's, it's been taking too long. So yeah, any more questions, feel free to reach out to Dominic or um, you can yeah, follow us you. on our GBV, very much, our GBV Africa on Instagram. Dominic, any last words? I think that much, much has been said. I, it is left for all of us to take the fight, to own it. But more importantly, we have left this at the footstep of governments. Globally, the citizens are government. So we must begin to do the right things presently from where we are, so that when we get into positions where we can implement change actively, we will do the right thing. So whether you're a father, whether you're a mother, we must begin to raise our family rights. We must begin to teach our children rights. We must begin to raise the male child rights. There's a lot of focus on the female child. You must learn how to cook. You must learn how to take care of your husband. You must learn how to do this. Who teaches the male child how to take care of a woman? Who teaches the male child that the woman is first of all your sister? Who teaches him how to behave in a marriage? So families must take that important. And as we evolve as a society, we also need the media. Media, entertainment shapes culture. It cannot be overemphasized. Mm. Private organizations you must be careful how you hand out brand ambassadorship to entertain individuals. What are the yardsticks? They must be based on values and culture. And then as we forge relationships and friendships, what are the yardsticks? Because the truth of the matter is this, if we don't make this a holistic fight, it will continue. And perpetrators would continue to perpetrate these heinous crimes. Victims would continue to go, you know, go through life with the pain and the hurts of having suffered such debilitating effects. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dominic. Thank you very much. Thank you for having. Thank you for having. Thank. Yes, it was it was a good one. Thank I you hope for this has me. been very helpful to everyone that is present. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for listening. Uh, yeah, kindly follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter at GBV Africa, on Facebook at the GBV Project, and on Instagram at GBV Africa. Thank you all once again, and do have a lovely evening. Okay.
Say